Hey guys, this is tutorial uh, 5.1 and I'm going to tell you in this video how to turn this structured range of data that's kind of boring looking and change it into this perfectly sorted and well formatted table and that's coming up in this video. So there's a difference between a range of data and a structured range of data. So this is a structured range of data and it's not just like random numbers thrown on a page which would just be a range of data. Um, this is a structured range of data because it has fields. So we've organized fields are the column headings. So we've given them column, he column headings. And then also, although we haven't labeled them, these are put into categories. So based on which day um, the sale was made. So that would be the category in the rows. And then the fields are the column headings. So these are organized with different fields and categories. And every time you enter uh, new information, this one line would be a record. Okay, so a structured range of data has uh, both fields and categories, and also you can add uh, a record in there that matches the fields uh, and the categories as well. But uh, we're gonna in this tutorial we're gonna talk about tables as well as uh, freezing uh, rows and columns as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, freeze rows and columns, and the reason why you would do that is because um, in a table the headings would scroll down with you, but with this structured range of data. It might get confusing to what the headings um, actually mean, especially if you had columns where you had like multiple money amounts, so you might not know what those money amounts refer to. So the best way to show that would be to freeze the column headings. So also this is just a good test question too. If you're doing a test for a job entry or even the MOS exam, this will probably be on there in some form. So how to freeze cells. So you go to view tab and then freeze panes and then freeze top row and what's cool about that now when you scroll down the top row stays there and now we know what the numbers are and the entries are referring to you can also unfreeze as well if you have to if you change your mind later just uh, do the same thing go to the view tab uh, freeze panes drop arrow and then unfreeze the panes all right so now we're going to create an excel table which is pretty easy um, there's a lot of reasons why you'd create an excel table but there's also reasons why you wouldn't so there's some uh, pros and cons to having a table. One of the pros would be um, it's easy to format. So when I click on the insert tab to switch this to a table, so just make sure that you've clicked somewhere inside of the structured range of data and make sure because we have field headers here that this check mark, my table has headers, is located there or it's there and you don't deselect it and then press OK. See how it easily formats. So it already chooses um, a color for you and also has you know, all, another feature about tables is they also have uh, filter buttons as well, uh, which make this data easy to sort and filter as well. And then again, like I said, the table style appears. And then also you can tell if this is a table because the table tools design tab will pop up. Um, so if you're doing subtotals, you would have to change it back to a structured range of data. So that's where tables wouldn't be useful. But if you were doing pivot tables, like we're going to do in tutorial 5.3, uh, you have to make a table first, so or it's just easier to work with if you have an original table. All right, so you can give this table a name. So here's the table name, and we're going to name it uh, June. June table. Just make sure that it's all one word because you can't put spaces in the table name. Press enter. So now that this table has a name, and we could actually use it in a formula if we wanted to, and you can choose banded rows. If your banded rows is selected, you should now uh, make sure that's checked. And then we'll choose to go with a green theme here. Uh, table style medium seven. Okay, in the table styles gallery. Again, this is in the table tools design box. So it's easy, really easy to format. And then also really easy to format the columns as well. So I'm going to go to column E, make sure that drop, that little arrow um, pops up. And then I highlight the whole column. And now I'm going to format that as a counting style, these numbers. And I'm also going to make all of the um, columns um, 15. Okay, so really easy format and edit as well. Okay, even though we don't need that much space for sales ID, we're going to leave that there. And now we're going to enter some new records and have the formatting change as well. So I'm going to enter in this information. I'll just skip forward as I type this um, information in. So what's nice about this is now that I've entered Friday a few times, uh, it autofills every time I type in the word, um, letter F. So I can just skip over. 
Same with if I type in uh, residential care, which is a category, and then I don't have to type it over and over again. I just wait till it pops up, press tab, and then enter the dollar value. And now all the records are added to the table. So now we're going to try and find uh, any duplicate records, or sorry, find, we're going to find and edit records and then find duplicates after, uh, see if we've made any mistakes. So uh, we're going to, if you want to find a record, you go to the Find and Select button in the Home tab, and then click on Find. And the one we're looking for is uh, from June 20, 2017. And then you click the Find Next button. So it takes you to that entry, and then we can close that. So if you just wanted to find something on that day, uh, fix something later maybe. Um, like we're going to close this. Now that we found the record, you notice that there's an there's an error on the money value, so it was supposed to be uh, 309, not 349. And then if you had totals, I would update the totals as well. So that's how you would find and select a record. And then we can press the control and home keys to get back to the top, or to A1. Now we're going to delete a record. So we scroll down to 56. And this is a common mistake I make when I'm typing in uh, this much information. I'll sometimes just repeat myself. So I do that in a lot of cases in Microsoft Word, Excel. Um, these are 50, 56. 56 and 57 are duplicates. So everything about them is exactly the same, which is very unlikely in this um, scenario because yeah, it should have different, um, it should be organized into different categories. Um, and then the likelihood of you getting the exact same money amount is, is, is not like, so it's, it's, it's definitely a mistake. So uh, in the tools group, so if you ever want to remove a duplicate, in the tables, tools, design tab, in the tools group here, uh, it'll say remove duplicates. So it'll look for duplicates. And we, we're just going to say, okay, go with the default, make sure that it's um, looks for everything, duplicates and everything. And then it says one duplicate found and remove. And then there's 104 unique values remain. So there's only one mistake. And now when we go back, the duplicate is gone. Okay, so that's how you'd remove duplicates again. Table tools design and the tools group remove duplicates. If, if you're like me and you make that mistake quite frequently. All right, so the last thing we're going to do in this tutorial is sort data. So there's a few ways you can do that. And we'll take a look at the first one. So I'm going to, let's say if I want to organize uh, everything in this business field as uh, in alphabetical order, I could do that just simply by going to, and just uh, on the data tab, I would click A to Z, okay, on alphabetical order. A to Z also means lowest to highest. So if you had a number, uh, if you had a, a column like the amount column, if you did A to Z, it'd be lowest to highest, and then Z day would be uh, largest to the smallest number. So um, it's not just alphabetical order, it's uh, A to Z is also lowest to highest as well. So, uh, but, but for this example, it would just be alphabetical order. And you can see as we scroll down, now we've put the um, business field, all the entries in alphabetical order. And there's also, if you want to either um, sort multiple fields at the same time, but assign priority to a few of them, uh, you can click on this, what I like to call the multi-sort button here uh, in the sort and filter group. So we'll click on that and a dialog box will come up, the multi-sort dialog box, and it will show the one we already did, uh, the business values and A to Z. And now we're going to switch that to days, which isn't going to make a lot of sense, but we're doing this on purpose. I'll show you why. So uh, we'll sort by the day, sort A to Z, and then we'll also add a level. So this way we can solve multiple uh, fields at the same time, but it'll assign priority to the first one. Um, so it'll sort by this first, and then the second, and then the third level. Sort of like bullet points that you have a first level, second level, third level. The same with the sort when you're doing a multi-sort here. So first it'll sort by the day. And then we're also going to uh, sort by the BISO, just like last time, business. And then we'll um, alphabetize that. So. A to Z, we'll leave that, and then we'll add a third level, which will be the amount. So that kind of makes sense. So the amount, 
So it kind of goes from day, uh, business, and then amount. And then we'll do, instead of doing, you could either do smallest or largest, or largest, smallest. Now, look what happens when we uh, do this. It's kind of a mess because we wanted to um, do the days in alphabetical order, but when it comes to days, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. You can't really do that in alphabetical order because it would jump from Friday to Monday to Saturday to Thursday. So uh, to fix that, you can do, you can fix that with a custom list. So we're going to go back to that um, that sort button. See how in that example, um, same with months. If you had like months, uh, alphabetical order wouldn't really work for you because it's a time thing. So um, you'd have to do if you had days or months, you'd have to do something called a custom list. And then let's say, I mean, you could choose on which day to start. See how they have a few examples here. But we're going to choose Sunday, Monday, or start. I don't think they have weekend dates, so it'll just be Monday, Monday to Friday. That's good. And then press OK. And, and that sort of makes sense. See, yeah, so they just have weekdays anyway. Uh, oh, no, they have Saturday, just at the bottom. OK, so Sunday would be first if it's there, but they don't include Sunday. So now, it's, now it makes sense. First, we sort Mondays um, together. And then we can look at, so we look at the days of the week first, and then these are in alphabetical order, and then on the third level, uh, largest to smallest amounts. So then you can analyze um, which days and which dates are making more money um, in each category. Okay, so that's how you sort data. Um, thanks for watching this so far. I'm going to have tutorial 5.2 up uh, very shortly, but uh, you can watch these videos uh, while you wait. And if you haven't had a chance yet, uh, press the subscribe button. Uh, while you're waiting for the next one. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.